Ashoka, uh, they, have you got rid of the noise? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that for you. Okay. Okay. I want everybody. I Okay, I, I want everybody and welcome you all for the second discussion on World um, United Nations World Days and this uh, uh, our uh, World Peace Day uh, for development, uh, development and peace. So today we have uh, uh, Professor Ian Pradis uh, is an author and a distinguished uh, professor in the Carleton University and ambassador for peace. And uh, please help me welcome uh, Professor Ian Pratis. Hello. Okay. I see I have been spotlighted. <laughs> okay. Um, when do you want me to start speaking? Ashoka? Yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, it is your. It I'm is sorry. Your, it is your turn now. Yeah, okay. Can... All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this. Um, I'm going to talk about science, climate change, and global global pandemic. I'll go back a little bit in time. In 2008. I published a book called Failsafe, Saving the Earth from Our Sounds. I wrote about Homo sapiens as perhaps a failed genetic experiment. I delivered the content of this book to students at Carleton University in a television course on ecology and culture. And halfway through the course, I stopped and looked at the young people I was teaching. And I offered an apology. And my apology was that my generation had not left a healthy planet for them. Now, much later in 2019, I participated in the climate strikes on Parliament Hill in Ottawa. And I re recalled that apology at Carleton University because I, on the hill, I was surrounded by thousands of magnificent children. And it was quite emotional for me to hear them shouting out for politicians to get behind the science. I was in admiration of their strike. It's sad that Earth matters had not changed for the better. I also noticed that I was not the only grandparent who cried a bit that day. However, a brilliant pushback to climate denial had been made by Polly Higgins. She was a fellow Scot, also a barrister, and she created a worldwide campaign to criminalize ecocide. This was the name given to describe the destruction of ecosystems by the carbon ca cabal and their political lackeys. The legal instrument of ecocide has been promoted by President Macron of France and the European Union. <clears throat> Polly Higgins' idea has garnered worldwide momentum to hold corporate executives and governments liable for the damage they do to ecosystems and humanity. Now, the legal work demanded specific legal changes to protect the earth for future generations of all species. Unfortunately, Polly Higgins died from cancer in April 2019. Her strong belief was that such a law would change the world. And her work now continues with a vast legal team in many countries. And her everlasting quip will never be forgotten. What she said was this, I have a choice to protect our earth or let it be destroyed. And these are the stakes that we all face. Now this 
campaign of criminalizing ecocide, making it um, a, 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 you know, this, this could be a, an attack on the destroy, destruction of the planet. The campaign of criminalizing ecocide is growing. Uh, at, the, at this time, the Marshall Islands and Maldives in the Pacific Ocean, they brought legal requests to the UN about their dire situation with rising sea levels. Sea levels. And they're making ecocide a criminal act in order to curb the damage done by corporations. Now, we've had the scientific knowledge since 1980, very clear, to create the solution to climate emergency. But the obstacles to the scientific knowledge are not technical or scientific. The obstacle was the attitudes, the values and concepts that define the dominance of corporate values. Their bottom line of profits was upheld by successive governments that devalued science. And it was never about science. It was about the brand of economics favored by big oil and other multinational corporations promoting carbon extraction, irrespective of the damage caused to ecosystems and to populations. Their collusion suppressed science. It confused public knowledge with misinformation and beefed up the blatant bribery of politicians. Now, did anyone notice that degradation of the Earth's ecology was the catalyst for radical climate change? Food crops were destroyed by horrendous heat waves as carbon dioxide poured into the atmosphere. Did no one realize that food riots and world panic traced back to one cause, the economic agenda of corporations? The under undercover deal between governments and corporations was invested in political and economic structures that centered on the carbon combustion complex. Now, this collective agenda destabilized, destabilized world order and it endangered the world's populations. Billionaire backers protected their profits, downplayed scientific conclusions, and deliberately dulled the intelligence of the, of the general public. They paid selected scientists to promote the position that the existing evidence on climate change does not support crisis warnings. These were scientists who had been bought. And everyone knows this was a bought and sold lie. Everybody knew the truth, but the lack of truth. The US government, corporations and industrialists, all of them knew the truth. To keep the bottom line of profits to their favor, they were willing to accept that civilization could well be destroyed in the not so distant future. Now I want to bring to your notice a brilliant indigenous response um, from Robin Wall Kimmerer, who is an indigenous woman, and she wrote a book called Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants. And she's very, very clear. This book came out in 2020. Um, I would like to just read some of her points, and then I'll go, go on further. This is what she said. What was needed was the wisdom of environmental science the clarity of philosophical analysis and the creative power of the written word to find new ways to understand and reimagine our relation to the natural world. That's page 283. I remember saying something like that to my students. Another quote from her. We seem to be living in an era of economics of fabricated demand and compulsive overconsumption. We continue to embrace economic systems that prescribe infinite growth on a finite planet. We need reforms that would ground economics in ecological principles and the constraints of thermodynamics. 
That's on page 300. And here's a real kicker on page 363. He writes, climate change will unequivocally defeat economics that are based on constant taking without giving in return. Now, all that I've said about climate applies to the COVID-19 pandemic, which is killing people worldwide. And it's necessary to follow the science or face disaster. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has devastated our planet. There's no doubt about that. Health officials appear every day on TV news, providing protocols such as social distancing, wearing masks, hand washing, and reducing contacts. However, their directions are often ignored by considerable populations who insist on their freedom to do whatever they wish, particularly with the economy. The balance between government and population is often seen by this body of people as oppressive. So they do just what they want. And in that process, they spread COVID-19 wide and far. Scientists do not yet know the full nature of the virus, its effects on the body, and just how lethal it can be to different populations. Any nation decimated by such a disease cannot expect to have a functioning economy. So you have Trump and Ford talking about, let's get the economy going, and we'll also deal with COVID. Doesn't work that way. Not at this stage. Essential steps to slow the spread of the coronavirus are not yet working. We know that from the um, statements last night on, on TV about what was happening in Canada. Now, science, science is in a race to create workable vaccines. And here there is some good news. I've just given you a lot of bad news up to, the, up to now, but there is some good news. Pfizer and BioNTech, they've developed a coronavirus vaccine and claim that it is 90% effective. Now, they're asking the US Food and Drug Administration to approve the vaccine for emergency use. Other potential vaccines are undergoing phase three studies by Moderno, AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. So all of these pharmaceutical giants are doing the research. However, there's an important consideration. Pfizer's vaccine requires extreme cold storage as it needs to be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius. That's minus 94 Fahrenheit. Now this cold chain makes delivery of the vaccines particularly challenging. The, logist the logistic issues of this requirement preclude many countries in the world from receiving this vaccine, as it will spoil at normal refrigeration temperatures. The minus 70 degree Celsius requirement of Pfizer disqualifies delivery of the vaccines to rural, rural areas and poor nations that are hit by surging infection, infection counts. And it's based on a synthetic mRNA to activate the immune system, which requires the frigid cold storage. Now, very few countries can afford to keep the vaccines in frigid or cold storage at minus 75, can't do it. So other vaccines are being developed by Moderna and Novavax. They don't have this drawback as they're aiming at the temperature of a regular refrigerator. And until we get to that, we do not have the instruments to save the world. Thankfully, the president-elect in America follows the science. Joe Biden has organized a new COVID task force as his first presidential task. So there, there, there is hope, um, but it's not yet morphed into reality 
where we can say, all right, we're on the road to deal with the COVID-19. At the moment, we're not. Um, I don't understand why people don't follow the directions of scientists, doctors, and many others. Um, it seems to be a, 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 an inane, <laughs> an inane not, no notice of how they're going to um, present themselves. And uh, I really don't know what to do. Um, how, how can I, as a, as a scientist, as a writer, um, get through to people who are not doing so at the moment, that we have, we have a job to do to defeat this uh, COVID-19. Um, it's not going to go away without our diligent um, steps from this moment. I think I'll leave it there so that uh, I can listen to um, what you have to say, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Okay, thank you. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Dr. Yen. Uh, uh, now, if, to, if you have any questions, you can now answer. Uh, uh, ask uh, Dr. Yen and he will, uh, he's ready to answer your question and he has a lot of knowledge and secret for us. So go ahead, maybe, maybe Visita has some, something to ask from Dr. Yen. Go ahead, Visita. Um, thank you, Dr. Yem Pratis. Uh, how does uh, the senior population will uh, 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 respond to this type of uh, uh, lonely and loneliness and isolation uh, during this COVID period, like um, solitary life, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, to reconnect for a year or two more, how they will mental health, do they need like a meditation type of an idea to uh, live there? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's a very, very good question, Visitor. Um, and it's one that's direct on me because I, I'm, I'm 78 and a lot of my friends are of that generation. Um, and a lot of them are suffering. And what, what I say to them is something along these lines. I say that there's a lot that you can do on your own, but, but you have to be very vigilant and very purposeful. Um, have, well, I'll tell you what I do, then, then, then we can go on that. I do every day a set of Qigong sets, three sets of Qigong. And then I also do other exercises so I'm exercising at home um, every day. It's about an hour and a half. Um, I also have a beautiful dog, um, but my wife is trying to keep her quiet <laughs> upstairs at the moment. I don't know how long that will last. But and I, I talk to everyone that I meet and talk, and you know we, we have the masks on and we keep up the distance. And so so that in 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 my neighborhood, it's very much a community. So people will stop and talk. And the, the, the thing to do is that I will offer to um, help them with uh, shopping. Um, my wife, Carolyn, is a great shopper and she's very, very kind uh, to do shopping for other elderly people. Um, but the, the, the really difficult thing is to talk to our elders about the necessity of meditation, qigong, exercising, and also having different things that they are working at. I'm, I, I'm an author, so, so I'm, I'm writing and scribbling all the time. So I, I am quite busy. Um, my walks with the, the dog, her, her name is Jasmine. She's a beautiful standard poodle. 
dark brown and I take her around because she, she's a magnet and people will want to talk to her and I always carry um, masks in my pocket so if, if people don't have a mask with them and when I come near them I hand it to them and say this is this is what we really need outside and then then we can talk um so the the but the situation with our elder elderly people particularly those who are in long care um residences um they are suffering great difficulties and in those um old age places our elderly people decline you know that they're not, that they're, they're not being brought into exercise they're not being brought into reading thinking talking discussing you know like we're discussing now um so it's really very important to to try and bring our seniors up a little bit and i i make this a a, a point in, in in my neighborhood and you know and i've uh, <laughs> persuaded several people that okay um this is how you do walking meditation <clears throat> and i show them how to do walking meditation and i say you can do this in your in your basement or your backyard before it gets too cold and um, but give yourself at least an hour of exercise of meditation so that you you're not sitting being worried about when the covid 19 is going to kill you and because that's what they're thinking about so in a sense um we have to make a presence with our seniors much much better than has happened before um, I take things upon myself um, because I, I, I don't feel that uh, enough is done for our elder people. So what do you think of that? Thank you, Ian. Uh, thank you very much, Ian. And, uh, I think uh, uh, we have like you know, our community is getting older and we have elderly community too. And I think uh, we have our friend uh, uh, Chandra, Padmini Hapuvarache, maybe she has, uh, you know, some question for you. Uh, Padmini, can you go ahead? Uh, actually, not questions, but um, our Sri Lankan senior group uh, is very active and we stay connected. Actually, um, as uh, Dr. Yan said, meditation is very important. Our temple offer meditation every day at nine o'clock. So you can live stream or go on the, uh, go to meetings and do it at home. I do it every day at nine o'clock to 9.45. And then also our senior group sharing dance program. You can do the sharing dance at home anytime. And it is a pilot project. It is done by the National Ballet of Canada. So I send that information to all the seniors. Uh, I'm sure some of them are doing it, but it is up to them. So, and also yesterday I was in a Zoom meeting with the Council of Aging. Uh, they had one discussion just on how to get, stay connected during COVID. It was very useful. So there are a number of ways people can stay connected and be happy instead of thinking about COVID. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, one thing I'd, I'd like to uh, communicate to you, um, my, my, my grandchildren refer to me as a techno peasant. I, I'm really mm -hmm. awful at social media and all the rest of it. Um, but I learned how to do Zoom. And you know, they, 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 they couldn't believe it that you know, I was able to do that. But uh, my, my, wife, my wife helped me um, to do that. And I, re I really find it's pretty great. Um, I can talk to all kinds of different people um, as I am 
doing today and it, it's it's good it's you it, and it's, it'll evolve and become much much better but that that is if, if i can do the zoom anybody can basically so that is something we can say to our seniors seniors, seniors. So this is how it works and this is how we can communicate with you when we can't come in to actually see you so that is a that that is a context it, it's a it's it's a very real reaching out and talking and speaking and listening um and I just say, if, if, if I can do it, anybody can. You know? So it's, 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 this, is, this is a new, new format for me, and I, I'm quite enjoying it. I, I mess up sometimes, but not too often. Uh, but I think, it, the, the, as you're, you're saying, the communication to elderly people, it's so important that um, you're there to talk to them. And with the Zoom, you can talk to them. And you know, there, there, there are a lot of uh, elderly. I say elderly. I'm I'm an elderly. Um, there, there's a lot of older people who who are shy. You know, they 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 don't know um, quite what to say. So what I do is I sing. Most most people give me money not to. Sing. and I, I get them to sing along with me with different songs and so on and it, it's just connection um, and, and, and that's what we can do with our elders make sure that we are kind thoughtful and connecting um, that, 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 that's, that's the kind of sort of medicine I would I would apply to our our seniors and if, if you want to you just sing me <laughs> we'll have another session of singing session see that would be good <laughs> and everyone has to come with a, a song or something like that or like my, a, my, my wife plays the, the celtic harp which oh, yeah i saw that there's a harp in, in the background that's right maybe we could ask her to to play Carolyn, are you there? No, no. <laughs> I, I just, I just. Uh, because this instrument is very, very old just, and sacred instrument to I, you know I, I, most I just, of the northern Celtic, uh, yeah, uh, you know, cultures. Uh, just, just a little one, Carolyn. I, I'm putting you on the sub. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're muted, Carolyn. So that, that, that means you have to play at least just one teeny, teeny little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you money. <laughs> I'm not practiced for it, but... <laughs> there you go. This is the way we can communicate to our, our seniors. Sing, play an instrument and just 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 bring them into what we are doing i'm collecting pennies carolyn
Hey, thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you very much. And keeping the uh, tradition alive. Thank and you. we really appreciate your play. And you know, it was very beautiful. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, it is very, you know, calming kind of music, you know, harp, the old uh, European instrument. Yes. And, uh, and, uh, and also I have my sister there and uh, I, maybe she has some question for Ian today. Yeah, and uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Yan for his uh, wonderful presentation. It was quite interesting and we learned a lot about the, the things going on uh, related to uh, uh, climate change. So as, as everybody knows, the main reason for the climate change is the greenhouse gas, production of greenhouse gases, right? So due to the conventional uh, energy consumption. So we don't have a solution unless we, we go for the uh, sustainable energy sources. So the, my question is now, actually I know you are, uh, you, since you are involved with this kind of thing, so you may be aware of that whether the Canadian government is genuinely taking attempt to address this problem. Mm -hmm. I just wondering, uh, just, you know, like, uh, it's really, they are really concerned about it or because I know that there are a lot of uh, activities done by David, uh, Dr. David Sosuki, but somehow those activities, you know, like uh, uh, disappeared. So just wondering, you know, what's going on with the, uh, the, the government involvement with this climate change. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank you for your your view. Um, it's very interesting. Is that uh, we, we don't know whether the um, liberals, as a minority, will be able to get through to um, get a climate change program going, because the the with the, the greenhouse 
gases, which are just increasing all, all the time. Um, mm -hmm. science, science shows us that um, we have to get away from carbon, oil. Yeah. And uh, th there are alternatives, um, yeah. such as wind. Wind. Yeah. Over Sustainable wind. energy sources. Absolutely. Yes. Now, my son uh, is in Scotland, one of my sons, and he's working on building um, wind farms in the different uh, lochs and waters around Scotland. And, and Scotland is operating so well with wind power. And they, 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 they kind of, this is making it less and less necessary yeah. to bring out oil or, or coal. So that's working. But in in Canada, there is too much power in the hands of uh, multinationals um, who are making an awful lot of money from from the uh, extraction of carbon. And until carbon is um, put to one side, um, there's not going to be anything effective for climate change. Um, and I, I, I've, I've written uh, books about this. My, my last one was called Shattered Earth. Mm -hmm. for, and before that, I wrote a book called Our World is Burning. And this was a 12, 12 different essays on uh, mindfulness. How can we use our mindfulness to stop our world from burning? Um, so in a sense, the, 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 this, this is why I put uh, climate change and COVID-19 together. The, 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 the both huge crises. And we, we tend to be too, oh, this is the wrong word, but I was going to say too concerned with COVID and forgetting about the climate change. The, 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 they're both together. Um, yes, exactly. that, that, that's why I wanted to um, deliver both of them to you. Um, today, and this um, it, it, com it comes down to the individual. Uh, how am I going to, to live? So one of the things that uh, my wife and I do, we, we, we grow a lot of vegetables, far more than we can ever use. So we um, give it away to many people in our uh, neighborhood. And you know we're 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 looking at being simple, um, creating things that are are not going to cause damage, and it will also help people out. So we can live, start with small things, but also we have to find a, the way to hold politicians hold their feet to the fire, because the, the fire is climate change. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, at the moment it's not going fast enough. The, the, there are indications, um, you know, well, what, what my son is doing, I, I, three cheers for him, that he's, he, he's making wind, um, wind farms so that the electricity can be um, run from that and not from oil or carbon. So it's, 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 it's the steps that have to be taken. I, I know we, we, we hear from um, Prime Minister Trudeau what, what he would like to do about the climate, but whether that can be pushed through with a minority um, that he has in the parliament, I'm, I'm not sure he'll be able to get it through. I hope I'm wrong. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ian, and uh, and I have a uh, not, another friend, uh, uh, Kirti. Kirti, maybe Kirti have another question for Ian today. Okay. Kirti, uh, are, uh, are you there? Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. First of all, uh, this is not a question, but it's my situation. I'm just telling at the beginning. 
so as you said i'm uh, you know i'm 73 years old and living alone i lost my wife some times ago and my children gone away and i don't have anybody here even a cat or a dog uh, but i try my best to cope up with the situation and uh, i have a stamp collection uh, uh, i inherited from my dad and this i am the second generation to handle that uh, uh, collection so i am working with that and you know there are so many things to do uh, that is about me uh, my question for you is doctor uh, i always uh, thinking now throughout the year california is burning uh, half of the year australia is burning in between uh, brazil is setting fire to the the the, the virgin forest uh, to uh, form them into of uh, the the farmland so uh, as a interested individual in the, in the environmental activities i was very closely studying this situation for last 30 40 years now i am 73 is not going to uh, go down or not going to stop it so as a scholar in that field what do you think will happen at the end when they are going to stop it or reduce this uh, the, uh, the 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 destruction mm -hmm. well thank you for that that's that, that that's a very deep view um and i i have i have the same questions the fires that take place on the west of the US, that, that, that's, that they, they have to accept that that is what is going to happen. So what they have to do is to, is to change the whole approach to forestry, um, which, is, which is what they, they are trying to do. But the, the, the overwhelm is um, really hard to come up with a, a plan. And the plan would be to have so many um, cut downs so that the fires could not jump from one forest to another. And that, that, that's a huge, huge undertaking. Um, what it might mean in the future, um, we may not be here. All that will be here of me are, are my many books. So I don't think there'll be anybody to read them. <laughs> so so we, we, we are facing very, very difficult times. Um, that's why I, I can't talk about COVID-19 without talking about climate change. Um, these are hand in hand at the moment. And we, we must really be very clear. How, how are we going to be? And I know what, 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 what I do deliberately. Um, I, I draw, I draw on, on, on my Buddhist background and my, teach, and my teaching. Um, I, was, I, was, I, I found, uh, I was cleaning out my, my basement a little bit yesterday, and I came across uh, some dried Bodhi leaves because uh, I, I was... Uh, I living in, in India for a few years, uh, teaching Dharma. And uh, on, when, when I had left, um, a, a good friend gave me a, a packet of these uh, um, Bodhi leaves. And I, I found this after many years. And I just realized, okay, that's, I, I've got that with me. But uh, what I have to do for myself in the face of Everything that you said, which which is difficult and true, um, I can only be in this situation with kindness. 
I can only be in this situation by reaching out and helping. Um, let me give you a little example of that, which, which is quite humorous. At ha Halloween, you get all, all the kids in our neighborhood, they're all my buddies, all of these kids. And so Carolyn and I, we went out with a little packet for each kid two days before Halloween. And we, we said, this is for you, but please don't go around um, on Halloween night in a crowd. Because, um, you know, you, if you have 20, 20 kids all cl clamoring around different fronts to, to get uh, treats and so on, um, you might be able, be able to pass on um, COVID-19 to other kids. And they all agreed. And, and they, their, their parents were kind of surprised because they, they, they also did not want their kids to go out on Halloween. But the kids made this up on their own. But I think it was partly to do with the fact that they did get goodies from Carolyn and me two days before. And, 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 and kids are smart. Um, you, you just have to talk to them. So it, it's, it's not just seniors that we have to reach out to. It's, it's the kids who are not used to thinking scientifically. They're not used to thinking about what could happen to them. So what I do with, with, with what, what you are presented, um, it is a dilemma. But in that dilemma, how am I going to be? I'm going to rest on the Buddha. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to have compassion. And I'm going to have fun with my buddies, most of whom are about five or six years old. <laughs> so, um, and I, I have a, a beautiful, I wish I could bring it up. I have a beautiful photograph. One of my little buddies, she's five years old. She, she came home from her, on, uh, from her school and she sat down in the road at the end of my alleyway and uh, said, I'd like you to have my lunch with me. <laughs> so, so we sat down in the road <laughs> at lunch. <laughs> and that sort of thing is, is, is uh, I know, in some way, I'm getting through to these kids, and we talk about all kinds of things. Um, uh, the, the kids will often come over and help uh, with the garden, and the, 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 they're worse than I am than I, as, as gardeners, but never mind. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's how am I going to be? I'm going to be as kind and as compassionate as I can, um, and I'm not pushing out of my mind what is actually happening with climate change and with COVID. I'm, I'm very perturbed, um, especially, especially with, with, with our elders. Um, the, the shutdowns with the necessity before COVID-19, um, we have to connect to the, uh, our seniors and, and give them some kind of practice to hold on to. Meditation, walking meditation, exercise, connecting, Zoom, all of these things connect. You may be in your house, but you know, for, for instance, you're taking part in a in a Zoom, which is of interest to you, and you're in your home. But you know, it's 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 interesting. You have to think about things and how what different people uh, have to say. But it's it's, it's a connection. You you're not isolated. It's the isolation that is so so dangerous, and especially for people living on their own. But you don't have to be on your own. You can take, take that step and create your own Zoom meetings about something that you want to talk about and bring in other people 
and we have this kind of discussion. Exactly. Which I think is really good. Yeah. So, and uh, thank you, Ian, uh, for the answer. And I have yeah. my friend Nandana is there, and uh, maybe he has a question for you. Okay. you Nandana, do you have anything? Uh, I have a silly question. Yeah, um, silly questions are well enjoyed in this hour. <laughs> are, are you the same professor in uh, Rob Snow show in uh, the radio, 1310? Uh, there's a professor Ian, uh, somebody from Carlton University speaking in the Rob Snow show in the 1310 radio channel. You are not the same professor. Um, I don't know. Well, well, different professor. I, I know his first name is Ian, but I don't know the last name. It's Pratis, P-R-A-T-T-I-S. Yeah, that professor, I don't know his last name. I thought it could be Sue. Okay. Was he better looking than me? Uh, I haven't <laughs> seen him. <laughs> don't answer that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's my question. That's it. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, Nandana and uh, uh, and also we have uh, Ranjani, uh, uh, maybe she has uh, some thoughts to share with us and, uh, you know, give you some kind of a, you know, challenging question. Ranjani. Ranjani? Yes, yes. Hi. Are you there? Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for your presentation, Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't have a question. I know that what we are going through in this stage, you know, with COVID-19 and now there's going to, there are going to be a vaccine coming. What do you think of that? Like uh, it's in the experiment stage, some says, and some says like it will be out in December or January, but uh, what do you think of in the future? What will come through, you know, to so that people will be getting this and maybe that there will be positive thinking that we can eradicate COVID-19, do you think? Uh, well, it's the, the vaccines that have been um, created at this point are that there's a, a problem with it because it has to be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius. Um, most most places don't have that kind of refrigeration. So, you know, there, there are other um, companies trying to change that so that the, 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 it's the, instead of having the necessity of minus 70 degrees, it'll just be regular um, refrigerators, and, and until that is sorted out, the 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 Pfizer vaccine requires extreme cold storage, which means that that can't be delivered to the rural areas or the poor countries. Um, other com other companies are trying to get a, a different kind of like the two companies, one's called Moderna, the other is Novavax. Um, they're aiming at the temperature of a regular refrigerator so that that could go anywhere. That, that could be coming out um, within the next three, four months. Um, they're, they're in stage three of their um, tests and so on. Um, so I, I think it's coming very soon. I, with the, within the next three to six months, we will have more vaccines that can be used. Um, the Pfizer one can only be used for rich people who can afford. Hello? Okay. So the difficulty is that they, the, the race by big companies is on to, to produce a vaccine um, that will be effective. Um, Pfizer's vaccine is uh, claimed to be 90% effective. Um, 
but it's a it's a cold chain process that so it, it could only apply to the people who are rich the countries that are rich um other countries are trying to take the temperature down to that of a regular refrigerator this is moderna and nova vax inc um so that should be coming out i'd say within the next three months or so and then the question is, okay, how can this be delivered? And that, that, that's the big question um, that the pharmaceutical companies are trying to solve at the moment. Thank you, Ian. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And I have a friend, uh, uh, Sampath, and maybe he has some uh, thoughts to share with us. Okay. Sampath? Sampat? Maybe he's not there, it's okay. Um, yeah, but I think it's mute. It's, uh, yeah, it's mute. Uh, uh, okay, he, he will be back. And, yeah, and I also have a question. In the history of mankind, you know, these kind of pandemics and, you know, epidemics, all kind of things were there, right? And and what kind of experience we have from those pandemics. I know uh, in some cities, like in, I, I'm uh, originally from Sri Lanka, and I have uh, some, some ruins, ancient ruins, like they are like cities, like major cities, and uh, very good real estate, like all stone, um, you know, houses and complexes, all kind of thing. And, Maybe those things were abundant in the jungle, maybe due to these kind of things, or uh, how the you know the humanity faced this, went through this kind of a uh, you know situations in the in the history. I, maybe I, you have a word for us. Yeah, I think that that's a possibility. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is not a, a new feature for humans to um, deal with. Um, but I would like to think that, uh, that we have uh, intelligence and careful and carefulness about how we go about dealing with it, um, and that that that's that that's hoping that uh, as human beings that we've evolved to different levels of compassion and concern and. Can we deliver that, or, or do we do we get gritty and, and just want the vaccines for ourselves and not for anybody else? So I do think that the, in, in, in past years, past millenniums, similar things must have happened. And I don't I don't think this is a this isn't a stranger. It's just something that our species has had to deal, deal with. with. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ian. And uh, we have Sampath here. Maybe he has some question and uh, uh, some thoughts to share with us. Okay. Uh, you know, thank you very much, Ian, for, for your uh, dedicated support for this group. Actually, I don't have any questions, Asoka. Just I wanted to thank you, everyone, for, for you, you for organizing this one. And thank you for, especially for Ian for coming here and um, uh, uh, sharing your thoughts with the, with the group. So, yeah, that's from my side, Ian. So the, I have one thing to say to you, my friend. Yes, yeah. You have to sing to a, at least one senior. <laughs> <laughs> senior, just one. And then when you've just done one, you've sung to just one, then it might get bigger and bigger. So just, just make them smile. And uh, we, we and, have really good, yeah. very good singers here too. <laughs> this group, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you, Ian. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Sampat. Thank you, Ian. And it's uh, now it is eight o'clock, and we uh, we appreciate all the hard work uh, done by to, to organize this, and and Dr. Ian for sharing his valuable time with us, and and you collect pennies today, but we collect you know uh, uh, sovereign uh, gold today, with with the knowledge you passed to us. So very very interesting very informative and thank you all for very much for joining here and maybe we'll have another time 
uh, as the time permit and we'll have we'll, we should come come at least on zoom to share our you know experience and knowledge and uh, thank you and it's, it's a great pleasure to have you here today and uh, thank you everybody who joined us and who helped here to and for the for the great technical support uh, uh, that happened here okay everybody thank you thank very you. much thank you and good night and subaratria subaratria you have a good night everyone night night